Hello and welcome to Truth For Today with Pastor Richard Whitcomb. My name is Pastor Gabriel Jima and it's my pleasure to present this webcast. In today's episode of Truth For Today, Pastor Whitcomb begins a new sermon series called Pray, P-R-A-Y, Powerful Results Await You. In this series, Pastor Whitcomb presents principles we need to know about prayer and how the power of prayer changes us to align with God. I invite you to watch and listen to him as he presents the first sermon of this series entitled The Power of Prayer. On June 12, 1873, farmers in the U.S. state of Minnesota looked up from their fields and saw what looked like a dark black storm heading towards them. But the dark sky wasn't caused by a storm. What turned the sky black in the middle of the day was an army of grasshoppers, winged insects that devour vegetation and destroy farms. Within a few hours, millions of grasshoppers had invaded the farms of Minnesota, covering the ground like a blanket and eating up all the crops. The devastation was so great Farms lay barren, food became scarce, and farmers went bankrupt. Every effort was made to destroy the grasshoppers. Fields were burnt with fire. Poison was used, but still the grasshoppers came. It seemed the more the farmers tried to eradicate the insects, the more they covered the ground. For nearly five years, the invasion of grasshoppers continued until the people of Minnesota were beaten down and barely able to survive. Thus, after all human efforts had failed, the people of Minnesota turned to God in prayer. The governor of the state, John Pillsbury, declared April 26, 1877 as a day of fasting and prayer. He urged every man, woman, and child to ask God to end the terrible plague. And on that April day, all schools, shops, stores, and offices were closed. There was a reverent, quiet hush over the entire state of Minnesota. Even non-Christians fasted and prayed to God for help. And God heard their cry and helped the people. Four days after the state fasted and prayed, a cold wind swept in. The temperature fell below freezing and every single grasshopper in the state of Minnesota was killed. After one day of prayer, five years of plague was ended. That's the power of prayer. When the people in Minnesota prayed, God answered, and history was changed. So imagine what would happen today if you and I, if we all prayed, what would God do? Imagine if all the Christians in the world joined in true, sincere, Bible-based prayer. What might change in our world? For if God would answer the prayers of the people of Minnesota, even though many of them were not even Christians, what will he do for us when we call on his name? That's the question we're going to answer today in our sermon entitled, The Power of Prayer. We're going to study one of the most amazing prayers ever prayed. And from that prayer, we're going to learn how we too can pray and change the world. But first, let's begin with prayer. Almighty and everlasting Father, we come before you today and ask you to stir our hearts anew and afresh. Open our eyes to see the power and the potential and the promise of prayer. Lord, help us today to learn what we can from your word, from the most amazing prayer in the Bible, that we will have our faith built, that we'll have our lives changed, that we will in turn change the world through our prayers. We submit to you now, we bind every voice of the enemy that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and minds with faith, with courage, with vision, that we might become a people of prayer. We thank you now in faith, in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. I want to invite you to take a moment and join your faith with mine. Put your hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen 
and amen. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Truth For Today. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I believe God has something special in store for you as we begin a new sermon series titled, Pray, Powerful Results Await You. For the next few weeks, we're entering a season of prayer to prepare us for the great things God wants to do in our lives. You see, if we want to tap into the power of God, we have to tap into the power of prayer. If we want to see God come and break through for us, we need to break through in prayer. For the fact is, there is power in prayer. That's the truth we're going to learn today as we study one of the most amazing prayers ever prayed. Our scripture text for today is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verses 7 to 10 and 12 to 14. It's an amazing story about an amazing prayer. Now, receive the word of the Lord. So Joshua and his entire army set out for Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them, the Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them. Somebody say, not a single one. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. Joshua traveled all night from Gilgal and took the Amorite armies by surprise. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. There has never been a day like this one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. Surely the Lord fought for Israel that day. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to your hearts in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. I love this story. I think it's one of the most overlooked stories of faith in the whole Bible. What an amazing prayer Joshua prayed. He dared to ask God to stop the sun and the moon and to extend the day till he could accomplish what he wanted. And God answered him. The Bible tells us that there has never been a day like this one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. And that's why I call this prayer one of the most amazing prayers in history. See, throughout history, there have been many great prayers prayed by many great men and women of God. There have been prayers prayed for the raising of the dead, and they were answered. There have been prayers prayed for healing, and prayers for deliverance, and prayers for provision. And God has miraculously met those needs and answered those prayers. But this is the only prayer in history for the day to be extended. This is the only time ever that the sun stood still. So this prayer is unique. It only happened once and it will never happen again. But the good news for us is that we can follow Joshua's example and have the same success with our prayers today. We may never pray for the sun to stand still, but we can see mighty miracles and powerful results when we pray like Joshua prayed. So let's examine this story and discover the three elements of powerful prayer. And here's your first truth today. Powerful prayer begins with a powerful God. You see, our story begins with Joshua and God's people setting out for battle against their enemies. And as they begin their journey, God speaks to them in verse 8. Do not be afraid of them, that is your enemies, the Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. So understand today that this is powerful prayer. doesn't just begin with Joshua. It begins with God. All powerful prayers begin with a powerful God. Oftentimes we think prayer begins with us, but it doesn't. It begins with God. For the fact is, all great prayers must be based in God and in his will. All great prayers are birthed in the heart and nature and the will of God. And the will of God is always revealed in the word of God. That's why the start of the world's most amazing prayer was a word from God. Joshua heard God give him a promise, and that promise initiated his amazing prayer. See, Joshua knew that God wanted to defeat every single one of his enemies. God said, not a single one of them will escape. 
And when the day was wearing out and the sun was about to set, Joshua knew that there was still more work to be done. They'd fought hard, they'd done their best, but there were still enemies on the run. So the only solution was to extend the day. He had to pray, sun, stand still so that the will of God could be accomplished. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. What you believe about God will determine the way you pray. If you don't believe in God, you won't pray. If you believe God is unconcerned and distant, you'll pray weak and hopeless prayers. If you believe God is a crisis management God, you'll pray when you're in a crisis, but not at other times. Many people treat God like the fire service. You call them when there's a fire, but ignore them the rest of the year. But when you believe in an all-powerful God, you'll pray prayers that require a miracle. When you believe in an all-loving God, you'll pray prayers to change people. When you believe in an all-glorious God, you'll pray prayers that will change the world and bring God praise. That's the lesson we can learn from the true story of how the world got the Bible in the English language. Way back in 1530, it was illegal to print the Bible in the English language. The government and the church did not want the Bible in the hands of common people. They thought it would empower the people and challenge the authority of the elite. Millions of souls were kept in spiritual darkness so that the elite could rule over them and hold power over them. But then came a man of God named William Tyndale. He wanted to publish the Bible in English so every man and woman, boy and girl in England could have a Bible they could read for themselves. But his vision brought him great persecution. He was imprisoned and eventually killed for translating the Bible into English. But before he died, Tyndale prayed a world-changing prayer. He prayed a prayer that moved God and changed history. William Tyndale prayed, Lord, Open the eyes of the king of England. One year later, his prayer was answered when King Henry himself authorized the first complete Bible in the English language translated from the original text. As a direct result of Tyndale's work and prayers, the King James Bible was eventually published, a Bible still in use around the world today. A nation was changed. In fact, our entire world has changed because one man prayed and the Bible was given to the common man. Show me your prayers and I'll show you the God you believe in. Sadly, the vast majority of prayers in the church today are often all centered around God blessing me. Bless me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Give me, Lord. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying for your own personal needs, but if that's all you ever pray for, it means you believe God exists solely for your pleasure and happiness. What you believe about God will affect the way you pray. Think about every prayer you prayed last week. If God answered every single prayer you prayed last week, would the world be any different today? What would change in our world if every one of your prayers were answered? Would our nation have revival? Would war end? Would COVID disappear? Would sinners be saved? Would orphans be rescued? Would your prayers change the world or would you be the only one to benefit. For most of us, if all our prayers were answered today, the only thing that would change would be us and our little circle of family and friends around us. But God has something far more for all of us. He wants you to pray big, bold prayers that change history. See, if you believe God is a loving God who cares about every detail of your life, you'll pray over every detail. And if you believe God is a powerful God who's moving in the world and that he wants to change the world, then you'll pray big, bold prayers that will change the world. God wants you to pray over the small details of your life, and he wants you to pray to change the world. For you see, the Bible says God is intimately involved in every detail of every life. 
you can pray everywhere because Proverbs 15 3 says the Lord is watching everywhere keeping his eye on both the evil and the good you can pray about every detail of life because Jesus taught us in Matthew 10 29 to 31 are not two sparrows sold for a penny yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered so don't be afraid you are worth more than many sparrows the fact is nothing is too small for God he cares about every detail of your life last week my daughter lost her wallet she left it on the top of her car and got in the car and drove off and it fell off inside her wallet she had her driver's license her national identity card and her bank card she came home and realized it was missing she told me and I sympathized with her but that's not all I did I went upstairs and I felt God nudging me to pray so I started praying and I asked God bring those important cards back to her I asked God for someone to find the wallet and bring it back to her I prayed and God answered within 15 minutes my daughter got a phone call from a man who'd found her wallet she got all her cards back because there's power in prayer and God cares about every detail of your life that's why Psalm 34 15 says the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right his ears are open to their cries for help and if you believe God cares about you you will pray about every detail of your life but not only that if you believe God cares about the world you'll pray about the world too if you believe God wants to move in every nation in every family in every tribe in every place you'll pray big bold world changing prayers and that's exactly what the Bible tells us to do it says that God is a powerful God who's looking for ways to help all of us he's ready to use his power to change the world in answer to our prayers for second Chronicles 6 9 says the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him God is ready right now today to do so many mighty things. His eyes are looking right now all over the earth for people to help. He's looking for ways to change the world. He's looking for ways right now to rescue orphan children. He wants to heal broken homes. He wants to heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons. He wants to end the coronavirus pandemic. He wants to touch the lives of unbelievers and bring them to faith in Christ. He wants revival to sweep every nation he wants the nations to be restored and war to end and peace to come on earth and he's a powerful God and prayers that change the world begin with knowing and understanding what God wants to do in our world today powerful prayers begin with a powerful God but that's not all powerful prayers require men and women to stand in faith for what God wants to do he wants to do in answer to your prayers that's why the Bible says in 2nd Chronicles 7 14 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sin and will heal their land our powerful God wants to do powerful things but we have a part to play as well and that brings us to the second element of powerful prayer powerful prayer requires powerful faith see our story continues in Joshua 10 12 with these words Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel let the Sun stand still and listen to what happened when Joshua believed God's plan he rose up and prayed in powerful faith when he heard God's word he responded in faith by speaking the impossible into existence for the fact is bold prayers are born out of deep faith when we believe something deeply we speak up with boldness so consider this truth today you will speak boldly about what you believe deeply when you hear a word from God it gives you the assurance that whatever you need to accomplish that word is yours when you pray you can pray big bold amazing prayers when you have a big bold amazing promise from God 
But the fact is this, hearing God's word initiates faith. Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Another translation says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the fact is you can't pray effectively unless you're praying in faith and you can't pray in faith unless you've heard God's word. A lot of people today think they're praying in faith, but all they're really doing is praying fantasy. They have human enthusiasm. They have a lot of excitement, but no faith. For faith only comes when God speaks his word, his truth, to our hearts. That's the truth we can learn from the amazing story of a couple named Matt and Laura Higgins. In March 1960, the nation of Kenya was in turmoil. Kenyan nationalists were struggling to gain independence from the British Empire, and the rural areas had been turned into a battlefield. Soldiers from the Kikuyu tribe were waging guerrilla warfare throughout the nation, committing random acts of violence. Under cover of night, they would ambush soldiers and civilians alike. In the middle of this violent atmosphere, American missionaries Matt and Laura Higgins were returning to Nairobi from a ministry trip on March 23rd. It was getting late at night as they drove through the heart of the Kikuyu territory. Even though many people had been killed in that very area, Matt and Laura had committed their ways to God. But then, just 17 miles outside of Nairobi, their Land Rover suddenly stopped running. Matt Higgins tried his best to repair the car in the dark, but he couldn't get it restarted. The Higgins were 17 miles from home, late in the dark of night, stranded in dangerous and hostile territory. With no way out and nowhere to go, they had no choice but to spend the night in the Land Rover. But before they slept, they prayed for protection, and they based their prayer on the Word of God in Psalms 4.8. I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. God honored his word and answered their prayer. The Higgins survived the night safely, and in the morning they were able to repair the car and drive home. They knew God had kept them safe, but they were to find out something very amazing soon after. A few weeks after this incident, Matt and Laura left Kenya to return to the U.S. for their leave. But something strange happened on the night before they left Nairobi. One of their pastors came to say goodbye and told them something that shocked and surprised them. The pastor told them how a member of the Kukuyu had come to him and confessed that he and three others had seen Matt and Laura the night they were stranded in the countryside. He and the three others had intended to attack them and kill them. They crept up to the car ready to kill Matt and Laura, but were stopped when they saw 16 men surrounding the car. The Kukuyu quickly ran away in fear. 16 men, Matt responded. I don't know what you mean. Laura and I were alone that night. Or so they thought. Then a few weeks later, as they visited a church in the U.S., a man named Clay Brent asked Matt if they had been in any danger recently. Why do you ask? Matt replied. Then Clay told Matt that on March 23rd, God had placed a heavy prayer burden on his heart. He called other men in the church, and 16 men in that church met together and prayed for Matt and Laura. 16 men praying in the U.S. at the very same time, on the very same day that Matt and Laura Higgins were in danger in Kenya, resulted in 16 angels surrounding the car and keeping them safe. God answered their prayer because it was a prayer based on the word of God. And friend, when you pray the word of God, you're praying in the will of God. And when you pray the word of God in the will of God, you will get God's 
answers. That's why Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here's the transforming truth you need to take home with you today. Prayer is not about changing God. It's about changing us to align with God. Prayer is not twisting God's arm to do what he doesn't want to do. Find out what God says he wants to do and pray in line with that. Find God's will and don't let it go. Pray until it happens. Fight until it happens. Work until it happens. Never, ever let go of God's will. Find a promise from the word of God and build your prayers on that. For when you do, when you get in line with God's word, then there is an assurance, a guarantee of answers. For listen to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. That's what Joshua did. He heard the word and believed the promise. He spoke to the sun to stand still and the moon to stay in place because bold faith produces bold prayers. And if we will pray like Joshua, we will see the results Joshua had. We will change the world when we pray big, bold prayers. And God is depending on you. Your faith matters. Your prayers matter. God can do it without you, but he's chosen to work with you and through you. For 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, we are God's fellow workers. And 2 Corinthians 6, 1 says, we are workers together with God. See, God wants to revive our nation, but he wants to do it with us. God wants to build his church, but he wants to do it with us. God wants to save souls, but he wants to do it with us. In fact, if we don't pray in faith, it won't happen at all. One of the saddest verses in the Bible is found in Ezekiel 22, verses 30 and 31. The Bible says, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I would not have to destroy the land. But I found no one. So now, the Lord says, I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with the fire of my anger. I will heap on their heads the full penalty for all their sins. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. God wants to save your nation, but he won't if you don't pray. God wants to bless your city, but he won't if you don't pray. The truth is, heaven is full of answers to prayers that were never prayed. There's a vast treasure in heaven that could have belonged to man. It could have been brought to earth, but it was never released from heaven because no one ever prayed for it to come. Joshua had a promise from God, but then he had to activate his faith to receive the promise. Today, there are too many of us who hear a word from God, but then we don't activate it. We don't do anything about it. We just sit and wait for God to do something when he's waiting for us to pray. That's why I believe that something has to change in your life today. You can't make it to the next level unless God gets involved. You can't make it on your own. You need the sun to stand still. You need the moon to hold its place. You need the day to be extra long and the strength to be extra strong. You need the Holy Ghost power to fill your life and to take control. God gave you the dream, but something has to change to make it happen. God told you his plan, but something has to change to bring it to pass. God gave you a destiny and planted it in your heart but something has to change to cause it to occur and your prayers are the agent of change your voice crying out in holy passion to an all-powerful God is what will move the hand that moves the world your heartfelt intercession spoken in faith to an all-powerful God is what will cause the sun to stand still We need to rise up in faith and speak what God speaks and believe for the impossible. We need to pray, Son, stand still. 
And I declare it's time for a new generation of spiritual Joshua's to arise. It's time for a new generation of leaders to arise. God is calling forth an army that won't settle for second best. God is calling forth a church that won't stop with a hundred, won't stop with a thousand, won't stop with ten thousand, won't stop until Jesus comes again. And I call forth every spiritual Joshua today to stand with me and declare, Son, stand still. We won't stop till every soul destined for this kingdom of God comes to know Jesus. We won't stop till every demon force is bound and every captive is set free. We won't stop till the purposes and the plans of God are accomplished and His glory fills the earth. We won't stop till our community is transformed, till our government is transformed, till our nation is transformed. We won't stop stop till our universities are filled with Holy Ghost fire. We won't stop till our schools are Holy Ghost arenas. We won't stop till our neighborhoods are revival centers. We won't accept anything other than revival, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. That's why I'm praying for millions of souls to be saved in this generation. For my Bible tells me in Psalm 2.8, God says, Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. And that will prepare us for the third element of powerful prayer. Powerful prayer brings powerful results. Our story gives us the powerful results of prayer in Joshua 10, 13 to 14. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. There has never been a day like this one before or since when the Lord answered such a prayer. Surely the Lord fought for Israel that day. When Joshua prayed in faith, God answered. The sun stood still, the moon stayed in place, and God gave his people a great victory on that day. And the same powerful results await you. That's what Jesus promised in Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone, someone say everyone, everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's the truth that men and women have discovered ever since Joshua prayed the world's most amazing prayer. See, prayer isn't something that just worked in the Bible days. From the time of Joshua till now, powerful results await anyone when men and women of faith pray to God. In fact, history is filled with verifiable answers to prayer. Prayer saved England from defeat and disaster. In May 1940, England and the Allies were at war with Hitler and Germany, and the Allies sat on the brink of defeat. 500,000 British and French troops lay trapped in a small coastal enclave on the coast of France, surrounded by German forces. The British government was seriously considering surrendering to Hitler's Germany. If that had happened, we would probably be speaking German today instead of English. But then... On May 23rd, King George VI issued a call for a national day of prayer. The result? Just 24 hours after the call for prayer, Adolf Hitler inexplicably ordered his armies to halt. Two days later, hundreds of thousands of British soldiers at Dunkirk were miraculously rescued. At its darkest hour, England prayed. God answered. The war was won, and the world was changed. That's the power of prayer. Prayer changed the nation of Romania. In 1980, the nation of Romania was a land of darkness and oppression. The communist dictator had banned the Bible, banned churches, and banned the preaching of the gospel. There were no Bible bookstores, no Christian radio or TV, no freedom at all. The people were suffering physically and spiritually. Pastors were executed. Christians were imprisoned and Bibles were burned. 
But the people of God could not be stopped. Gathering secretly in homes and even in forests, they prayed. They prayed for God to bring freedom to Romania. They prayed for the overthrow of the evil dictator. They prayed for gospel crusades to be held openly in the stadiums of Romania. And then in 1989, the dictator was overthrown. Communism was defeated. Freedom came to Romania. Bibles were distributed. Churches were opened. And pastors were released from prison. In fact, one prison that had held Christians in chains was later converted to a pentecost Pentecostal church. That's the power of prayer. The Bible teaches us the power of prayer. History confirms to us the power of prayer. But it's not just the Bible. It's not just history. I've seen it myself in my own life. My oldest daughter, many years ago, when she was three years old, she became sick with meningitis in her blood. We rushed her to the hospital at Eku, Nigeria. The doctor laid her hand on my shoulder and looked in my eyes with tears in her eyes and said, there's nothing we can do. I'll never forget the look in her eyes when she said to me, only God can save her. We prayed. Our daughter lived. Today she's married with three children. God did what no man and no medicine could do. That's the power of prayer. In my church, we've seen thousands of answers to prayer. We've seen women who were barren give birth. We've seen men who were falsely accused and imprisoned released. We've seen contracts signed, jobs received, bodies healed, lives touched, marriages restored, addictions broken, thousands of prayers answered for thousands of people all over the world for these years, all because a powerful God responds to powerful faith and gives us powerful results when we pray. That's the power of prayer. And that power is available to you today, to each and every one of us. You don't have to be rich or married or successful or educated or perfect to tap into the power of prayer. You simply have to Pray. Pray to God. Pray in faith. Pray and expect results. For what God has done for others, He will do for you. What the Bible promises to all, God will surely do for you when you pray. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 21, 21 and 22, Truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you can say to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Powerful prayer begins with a powerful God. Powerful prayer requires powerful faith. Powerful prayer brings powerful results. Powerful results await you when you pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, I pray you'll stir a new burden of prayer in every heart watching and listening today. I pray, God, that you'll shake us out of our complacency, out of our apathy, out of our doubt, and out of our unbelief. Lord, forgive us for not believing your word. Forgive us for not praying like you are the Almighty God. Forgive us, Lord, for centering so many of our prayers around us and not thinking of the world around us. Forgive us, Lord, for doubting your desire and your love. Forgive us, Lord, for doubting your ability to change us and to change our world. I pray today you'll begin to stir in us a new birthing of prayer, a new travailing, a new intercession, a new faith. I pray today that we will see you as the powerful God and our powerful faith will arise so that we might receive powerful results when we pray. I thank you by faith in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We are so glad that you could join us today for Truth For Today. We trust that the message and our ministry is a blessing to you today. Here is how you can get more from Pastor Whitcomb. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home. Take this message deeper by watching the sermon again on YouTube. There are many life-changing sermon videos by Pastor Whitcomb you can watch or download for free. Simply visit youtube.com to find Pastor Richard C. Whitcomb's YouTube channel and subscribe. Don't trade what you want most for what you want in the moment. You can also find the sermon notes and daily devotional for this and other sermons by visiting Pastor Whitcomb's website at pastorrichardcwhitcomb.com. Vision is vital. Vital to your victory. 
Receive daily inspiration by following Pastor Whitcomb on Twitter at RevRCW. Like and follow Pastor Richard C. Whitcomb on Facebook for more inspiration. Let us know how this broadcast has changed your life. Send us an email to testify at agapehousegana.org. Send your prayer request to prayer at agapehousegana.org. Find out more about the ministry of Agape House New Testament Church by visiting agapehousegana.org or Agape House New Testament Church on Facebook. God bless you. Next week on Truth For Today, Pastor Whitcom will continue the sermon series, Pray, P-R-A-Y, Powerful Results, await you with a sermon entitled, Don't Stop Pray. Here is what to look forward to. Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. Sometimes it's hard to pray. Sometimes you seem silent and far away. Sometimes I ask, but I don't see. Sometimes I knock, but it feels like you're ignoring me. But God, I want to have faith. So help my unbelief. I know you're not a God who's deaf and dumb. I know your eyes are not blind. I know you're righteous, faithful, just and true. I remind my heart that you are good. Help me not to give up. Help me to press in and persevere. Help me to have patience in your perfect will. Help me to praise you while I wait. Amen. Amen. You should not miss this for anything in the world. On behalf of Pastor Whitcomb and all of us here at Agape Gospel Mission, we say thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to being with you again next week. Until then, stay blessed and have a wonderful week.